It's possible to argue that there was a time when most people had the ability or access to repair the majority of their possessions. Quilts were patched, socks were darned, and shoes would go to the cobblers to be resold. It can also be argued that most people had very few possessions, perhaps limiting those possessions to the ones that are repairable. Between then and now something has changed. We have far more possessions, but are much more limited in our abilities to repair them. This essay plans to look at design's response to the ebb and flow of repair versus consume cultures. In the mid-1940s, post-war nations suddenly needed new outputs for the massive industrial productivity they had established over the previous years. Writing for The Guardian this year, Jeff Sparrow states that disposability was one of the solutions adopted to keep assembly lines humming. He continues, Consumers in America and throughout the world were encouraged to become dissatisfied with the perfectly serviceable items, so that instead of making one-off purchases, they updated seasonally. Product seasons and models were not a new idea in the 1940s. In 1927, General Motors turned their back on Henry Ford's any colour they want as long as it's black approach to consumers by opening the first automotive design studio. Run by Harley Earl, the art and colour collection studio focused on appearance and style and aimed to produce new cars each year that worked the same but looked different. As George Frederick put it in his 1928 article titled Is Progressive Obsolescence the Path Towards Increased Consumption? Even Ford had been forced to bow before the god of obsolescence. It is possible that Aldous Huxley had also seen this god as three years later he wrote in his novel Brave New World of a dystopian society that subliminally prepared its babies for their future role as consumers by playing them recordings that said over and over again, Old clothes are beastly. We throw away old clothes. Ending is better than mending. Ending is better than mending. Jumping forward in time, during the middle decades of the last century, mending was still necessary. It was a common weekend suburban sight to see the bonnets of Austins and Triumphs open for repairs, servicing and tinkering being carried out by the owners. This would now be considered a novel sight, but what has happened during the intervening time? Have manufacturers closed off their designs so that driveway repairs aren't possible? Or perhaps the cars of 50 years ago were poorly designed and contemporary models are just better? In recent years, the interest in people's abilities to repair looks to be increasing. Last year, IKEA has committed to making repairability designed into their products from the beginning, and this year we'll see the introduction of the right to repair legislation that will make product repairability and spare parts availability written into law. There is also a culture of repair. Many towns now host repair cafes, and online repair and restoration videos get millions of views.